outfit that we saw you stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger? or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you. Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, for the righteous into eternal life. <clears throat> the final scripture is from Matthew, chapter 5, verses 3 through 12. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Bless the reading and the hearing of the word.
Sorry. You're all good. We saw the voice of God and nothing else. Speak to me. Lord, he only wants to hear. Walk with me. Show me who you are at the mirror. You're not in it, and I don't want it. Let all else fade away. Take the whole world. Give me Jesus. Let all else fade away.
Ordination to Christian ministry is preceded by study, work, and prayer, guided by the Spirit of God. I now call on the representatives of the sponsoring congregations and of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ in the Northern Lights region to present Gloria Soya and to offer their witnesses to her readiness for ordination. It's more like a wedding, you know, things don't go quite right, you don't go quite right. I hope you remember this ordination. Um, in addition to making the speech in your ear, I'm a moderator of the board of directors of First Christian Church, Helen, Montana, and I am honored and pleased to represent First Christian Church, Gloria Soya's own congregation, and to speak the church's support for Gloria's ordination as minister and the Christian Church in Sacrifice of Christ. Over the past several years, the church has gained the opportunity to know Gloria for preaching occasions, study sessions, community involvement, and personal interaction. The church also knows how hard she has worked to accomplish coursework for her master's authority, all while working full time in a demanding profession, doing volunteer work for justice causes, and even moving to Oregon. She is thoughtful and passionate, and has taken the heart and mind of mission of inclusiveness and sensitivity to all people, regardless of where they may be in their life journey. Gloria particularly holds these values firmly for those she sees as a whether church or not. She has a gift for working to bring diverging mindsets together. She also lives Christian faith daily, no matter what, to be a minister for the rest of the life. Mm -hmm. Only strengthen the disciple of Christ, and 
mystery we practice daily and the people they touch. Your common worship is rather important. Thank you. We bring you greetings and blessings from your brothers and sisters in the First Christian Church of Psychic Christ in Silverberg. Our congregation welcomed, embraced, and unconditionally loved Gloria in the two years that she resided in Minnesota. As you might expect, we are so grateful for the many ways that she has impacted the people of our congregation there. And we still do. We met Gloria, of course, was in church. As our friendship and relationship grew, we could see her opening to new and different opportunities in her life. Gloria has a way of thinking outside the box, with a broad experience both in the private sector and the church setting. She brought to our ministry and sale freshness, enthusiasm, and willingness to serve wherever she is needed. She is a strong woman of faith and offers ministry of mercy and compassion to the spirit. First Christian Church in Salem has a long history of both young men and young women members who have entered the ministry. We have been proud of each one and today celebrate with her. From both near and far, her, her confirmation of faith, commitment to the church, and willingness to follow the God calls. We have a sense of pride in being part of that place of worship. We are proud of her answering God's call currently in the life. We can see her face. I'm sorry, it's her face. <laughs> we can see her faith in her eyes, her smile, and her tenacity. The First Christian Church in Salem, Oregon, presents Gloria as a qualified pastor, ready for ordination. In terms of qualification, Gloria has served in three different regions Montana, Oregon, Southwest Idaho, and Northern Idaho. These regions offer positive affirmation of Gloria's ability to minister. Gloria incorporated her LDS classes with her congregational experiences. The Oregon Commission on Ministry considered her as a strong candidate, as they did in Montana. The FCC staff in Salem were impressed with her leadership, preaching, and teaching skills. We are proud to be. Since the Northern Lights region approved Gloria for ordination, we believe that they also have recognized her gifts and graces for our ordained disciples of Christ's ministry. Requirements are similar in three regions. So we're thinking that Gloria has really been evaluated <laughs> and received more than most ministerial candidates. In terms of personal and spirituality and development, Gloria is a mature woman who has allowed her own experiences in life to develop a theological foundation that is relatable to others of a variety of cultures and backgrounds. She is warm, friendly, open, transparent, and genuine. Gloria can quickly connect with others because she knows who she is and she is comfortable in her own skin. I have a word for Gloria. It's called sanctuary. That song is a sanctuary. Gloria is a sanctuary. And people who know her are convinced that she's really a hundred year old wise woman. She's a 45 year old body and just has a pointer. We are here today because Gloria heard the Creator clearly call her name. Her response was, Here I am, Lord. 
send you. For all of us at First Christian Church in Salem, Oregon, we bestow our deepest blessings and love at this time of an ordination. Moderator of the Sister Congregation in Great Falls, Montana. We were first introduced to Gloria who passed the wrong. It was either Ron or Jean, I'm not sure which. But we have been blessed to see how she has brought God into our congregation from the beginning. And I don't know if Brad had kept today, but we had Gloria on a Zoom message on Sunday, and the elder at the table was not able to hear Gloria, so he just went on with the rest of the service. Us, everybody that was on Zoom just asked Gloria to hang on, and she was persistent, and she hung on, and she gave us a joyful message, and we all thoroughly enjoyed it. And then last Sunday, we were blessed to have her again come to the church and preach to our congregation. And oh, she is a speaker of God's message. And, and from the congregation in Great Falls, Montana. We would like to present Lord as him. Well, really, I don't have to say because you all have done it for me. But I am the representative for the Northern Lights Region Commission on the Ministry. And I want to let you know that Gloria began her journey towards ordination probably when she was a little, little tiny girl. But the official step that I picked out was when she came to visit this church at the um, request of Susan Brown. And Susan Brown was a senior member of ours who has moved away. And she brought um, Gloria to church. And as Gloria said, it wasn't so much the actual service that went to me, it, it was a small group discussion after church, where she saw people sharing different points of view and listening, actually listening to each other. From this beginning, she began her, her pathway to ordination. She sought the, sought the support of SCC in this path and to eventual ordination. She began a seminary at Lexington. She moved to Oregon and was um, able to get to have First Christian Church of Salem walk beside her, and she moved back to Montana. And as you've heard, she has had three commissions on the ministry working with her. That's a big deal. That's a very big deal. When she came back to Montana, the Northern Lights region is the commission on ministry that she came to, and we assigned her to a in care group. And the in care group was supposed to walk alongside this candidate for two or three years. and. Make sure they understand what it means to have faith and how you deal with this problem and what does this mean and what, what, what should you do. Well, we kind of had Gloria on the past, right? Because she said she has done so much in the three commission on the ministries. We just looked at her and said, well, there's not a whole lot that we can do to provide her support because she is ready. She is so ready. So to eventually get um, to the point of ordination, Gloria had to leave with the commission on the ministry. She had to fill out a very intensive thing called a search profile, <laughs> which really made her look at what are her competencies in ministry, where does she see herself as strengths, where are areas that maybe she would like to grow in. But then she was to write a paper. And this is not just you know, taking a while paper. And no, she could not go back to her seminary papers and go, oh, let's just go back and clean it up just a little bit. And not we had a whole list of things that you had to speak to, and the instructions were not to go, okay, A says talk about my faith. A, 
My baby is going to have a big chakra. Gloria told the story. And she wove her, her understandings and her wonderings and her heart into this story. And it was um, her faith, her baby of ministry, her love of God. Did she have a commission on the ministry to review it? And by the way, I just say that. Then the commission gave Gloria, um, looked at it and evaluated all of these areas. And then in March, unanimously and with great enthusiasm, enthusiasm said yes for the nation. Which brings us to this beautiful and meaningful day. It is my pleasure on behalf of the Commission on Ministry of the Rights Region to present Gloria's story for the nation. to all of you the spoken words of truth about Gloria's fitness for ministry and her readiness for this next step. And Gloria, I would just remind you again, in addition to those gathered here, you are surrounded by all of your brothers and sisters across the Northern Lights region and across the wider church. As we are one body in Christ, welcoming you into the life of the ordained. So Gloria Soya, if you are ready to make your covenant with God, my sister in faith, do you believe that you are truly called by God and the church to the life and work of ministry in the name of Jesus Christ? Paul the Apostle testified, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Will you, Gloria, endeavor to be diligent in your practice of the Christian life, reading the Bible, continuing steadfastly in prayer, deepening in spiritual disciplines, and taking up your cross daily to follow Christ? I know. Scripture teaches that the church was devoted to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. Will you endeavor faithfully to fulfill your calling among the people who finish your prayer? By preaching the word of God and the animal's training, and by the baptism of the Lord's Supper. Dominating over those in their charge, but by example, will you endeavor to care for the people of God, nourishing, teaching, and encouraging them? giving direction to the life of the congregation, counseling the trouble, declaring God's forgiveness of sin, and proclaiming the new life that we find in Christ Jesus. I will with the help of God. The Spirit of God led Jesus to preach good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, set at liberty the oppressed and proclaim the time of God's good favor. Will you, Gloria, endeavor to lead the people of God in their commitment to the global mission of the church, guiding their concern for justice, freedom, and peace for all people, and taking a place of responsible leadership and service in the church and in the world? I will, with the help of God. The Apostle Paul proclaims the church to be one body with many members. Will you, Gloria, endeavor to live and work in unity with all Christians, witnessing to the visible unity of the church, Cooperating with disciples, colleagues in the ministry of the congregation, area, region, general, and ecumenical church, and leading the church in fulfilling its ministry of reconciliation. I will, with the help of God. With Jesus as your example, will you, Gloria, endeavor to conduct yourself so that your life is shaped by Jesus Christ, who took the form of a servant for our sake? And will you, with the help of the Holy Spirit, continually rekindle the gift of God that is in you to make known to all people the gospel of the grace of God? I will, with the help of God. May God, who has given you the will to do these things, give you grace to perform them. Gloria, God who, got, God who called you is faithful and will not fail you. My brothers and sisters, I invite you to stand as you are able in body or in spirit. You have heard the promises of our sister Gloria. Do you who also are called by God to serve, 
affirm Gloria's call and accept her to the life and work of the ordained ministry. Gloria, we accept you as one called to leadership in the church and celebrate that today you are ordained. We pledge our love and offer our prayers that together we may glorify God and make Christ known in the world. You may be seated. Brad, I'm switching to the wireless mic and it's on. We're moving into the ordaining action and that involves the laying on of hands and the ordination of prayer. So the laying on of hands is, um, extends the, the gift of ordination and asks for God's blessings to be upon us. At my invitation, I will invite those of you who are comfortable to come forward and gather around and lay on hands on her, or if you can't get that close to her, lay on hands and toes. If you are comfortable staying where you are, then, then I'd like to do so. <laughs> and know that the Spirit of God is among us. The Lord of the Lamb in prayer is witnessed to in Scripture as a sign of reconciliation, empowering, and sending forth. The church uses this prayerful act as a visible sign of the gift of the Holy Spirit, affirming glory as vocation and entrusting her with the power and authority, which is the work of God. Glory to the Lord. And I invite you to come forward and be able to come forward to get out of the room.
the sign. The sign. <laughs> now we get to present the signs of the ministerial office to Gloria. And I begin with the ministerial code of ethics, which we invite Gloria to sign here in whatever pen you'd like. <laughs> The Ministerial Code of Ethics and the Christian Church Disciples of Christ is signed and adhered to by all ordained ministers in the expectation that we will live responsible lives as we endeavor to model God's grace and God's love before you. So I ask you to sign. Them. And then I also have the honor of presenting Gloria with her certificate of ordination. And I want to read it to all of you. To Christians and congregations everywhere, greetings in the name of Jesus the Christ. This certificate serves as a formal and official declaration that Gloria Don Soya, having met the requirements for ordination as established by the Commission on the Ministry of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ in the Northern Lights region, was duly ordained to the Christian ministry Sunday, July 18th, 2021, at First Christian Church, Helena, Montana. This ordination was carried out by the Christian Church Disciples of Christ in the Northern Lights region in covenantal partnership with First Christian Church, Helena, Montana. I present this to you. And now we are going to have the wonderful privilege of presenting some gifts of the office to Gloria. Gloria, rejoice in God, and may you be clothed in garments of salvation and covered with a robe of integrity. We practiced the zipper one time. <laughs> Gloria, receive this. Gloria, receive this soul as a sign of your being yoked with Christ, remembering his words, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. We're going to open with Romans 8.28. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God. And to them who are the called according to his purpose. Gloria, on this, the day of your ordination, it is with deep humility gratitude and love that we present you with your own personal limited edition copy of the entire seven volume St. John's Bible. And also in closing, the ironic blessing. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance and give thee peace. Amen.
Gloria, your sister um, elders, I was going to say fellow elders, <laughs> have this traveling communion set for you, knowing full well that you will be serving and going wherever you are called. And we're just so pleased to serve with you as elders. <laughs> Gloria, the chalice and paten that hold the juice and the bread at the communion table that are being brought forward are a special gift for you from your loving and proud church family here at First Christian Church, Helena. These were handcrafted especially for you by artisan glass blowers in Townsend, Montana, and they are sung by them. Each time you use them in the service of communion, wherever that is, remember this home, this proud family, and that all are welcome. It's my turn now to give back to all of you. The song that will play while I pass out something for each of you was one of my mother's favorites. Happy birthday, mom. I love all of you. Thank you.
We come, we come now to our time of offering. And as a reminder, we're not going to be coming forward or passing anything around today. But um, again, you are encouraged if you are equal and you have a desire to give a donation to the main family. If you want to do so, you can find that in the offering table. If you want to do so, you want to do so. And they'll be out 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 and they will 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 be out and
down the stairs right across from the doorway. Um, we are so thankful that you've all joined us today and we can't wait to celebrate with you afterwards.
Before I close us out, I would like to offer my express gratitude to Paul and Lena Whitham. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> to all of you, my heart, you are with me always. Our God, in whatever name you choose, in whatever way you pray, go out in the world, love kindness, do justice, and walk humbly. Amen. Amen. <laughs>